Well, good morning and uh, welcoming you to yet another edition of the FUFA Women Elite League semi-final. It's the second one and the final one because we had the first one where Renez uh, managed to eject. Uh, Renez managed to go through uh, through penalties and Bunyaruguru are now packing their bags home. But they have represented very well and have done and so well they took the match to the penalties the likes of alupo nora akatsabe will always be remembered for this year's tournament they did a lot as they wait upon if they could receive uh, trophies at the end of the day for uh, their spectacular performance uh, when it comes to this year's edition we are yet in for another one where shima runes and wakiso hills are going to be locking horns they did come through sportingly because wakiso hill did eject amuria hill who seemed stubborn at the group stages. And then when you talk about, uh, when you talk about Shimaroons, they have been a very uh, good team, excellent one, having the top scorer at the moment, Millicent Namuembe scoring five goals. They did uh, beat Ajax Queens of Bolenga and will now uh, see and hustle it out on who uh, goes uh, to join Rines in the finals. My name is Fifi Fiona Pink Nikta Octopus, also known as Mama Sky. I also thank you uh, for going to Kololo. I've just passed by there and I've seen a lot of you going for vaccination as a country. That's what we need at the moment to curb uh, COVID-19 and to be ready uh, for anything that comes along that line. Uh, with me in studio, I have a coach and I have a super player. The super player was MVP some time back and I know she's got her groove back though she did not uh, try to win the Super League this time around. She had to juggle uh, between exams and then going on to the pitch and again she also didn't score the goals she anticipated. That is Juliet Nalukenge for you but before I talk to her I'm going to talk to coach Majida Nant, and I'm lucky to have worked under her. I normally boost around telling people our spokesperson when Majida was here. We have a record beating South Sudan 22 goals. Nobody has done that, but people think, um, you know, I'm bragging. Yeah, it's good to be bragging. Coach Majida, how are you so far? I'm good, Fifi. How are you? I'm fantastic. That's good. Uh, Rines have just uh, gone to the finals. Yes. Actually. What did they do right? Uh, actually, Rines was one of the most prepared teams. Yeah. Uh, the way they have played, the way they are, from the beginning, you would see that it w they were working as a team. Mm. They were every time advancing to the next level, but it was planned. And actually, the goalkeeper, Elsie, is one of the people who have put Rennes in that game throughout, ever since they started, as uh, and now Les Shakira and other players. So, Rennes reaching the finals, it is something that they have worked for and they deserve it. Okay. Mm. Uh, thank you, Coach. Now, Juliet, 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 my little sister. Juliet, how are you? I'm okay. How do you feel being here at UBC? Uh, I feel so happy. You feel so happy. How does it feel that this time around you did not help Kawempe go far in the tournament? I did help Kawempe because I, had, I was in the examination room. So I had to first concentrate on my exams, then Soka comes. Okay, you had to first concentrate on the examinations so that everything would go well. That is Juliet and coach are in studio B. Uh, Juliet, yes. as a player who is going into uh, the semifinals, you've gone to semifinals at different levels, you've won, even winning MVP. How do you think the players are feeling right now before they walk onto the pitch for this uh, semifinal hustle between Wakiso and uh, Shemaroons? You know, semifinals, it's like you're going to qualify for the finals. So you be happy you go in the game when you your moods like they are like you're going to win you're not going to what to lose because playing a loser game it's not that good but playing a final it's very very good your moods be high than playing the losers match so, so i know she mounts and works so they are all going to be working hard that one team could fight to the finals you just had uh, Shima runes. They love to be called whatever they do. The players know it very well. So for Juliet, that's what she tells us. They are normally excited, a little bit of tension. Let's go to the coach, Coach Majida. Mm -hmm. You are the coach of both sides, and yeah. they are walking into a semi-final. Exactly. A reality is one of them will have to go home, and one will have to go to the final. Mm. What are you telling your players? Okay, now what I'll tell the players, they have all been in this. Since they have played now, the, these are semi-finals. They are totally different, but their target is to go to the finals. With Shima runs my team, I just want them not to change what they played during the quarter, the quarter finals. They were playing, I saw some good football from that team, by the way. They were building from the back. 
they brought the, the ball into the midfield and then they did some good distribution, they connected, there was a lot of mobility and when there's mobility in the game, definitely there's opening up, so they played a kind of width play and mainly used their wingers, the right midfielder and the left midfielder, Lillian and Millsent, they were one of the virtual players that helped with that Adong and Anite. Now for Shima Runes, just play the game you played in the quarterfinals. Then for Makiso Hills, they are young players, uh, their phys physicality is not good, they are short, they are thin, they look young. But what do you have to do when you are playing a team like Shim Shim Shimarun? It is zone of marking. Find that opponent. If someone is within your zone, take her up. If she goes, leave and wait for someone else. They need to do very, like they shouldn't allow Shimarun's to have that free space. So should they should immediately react and pressure the Shimaruns players, not to give them spaces, and they shouldn't open up very much because Shimaruns game is to open up, but they should think of closing the gaps, and once they do that, they can survive not to be scored three in the first half. Oh, uh, from the coach's words, it means that Shimaruns are a free scoring team. Let me go back to Juliet, our dear MVP, former MVP, but MVP or is an MVP as the teams walk onto the pitch. Uh, Juliet, as a star player in Millicent, you have five goals to your name. Uh, do you have a lot of pressure on you coming on to, to score because you've been in that uh, situation? When you know you have a lot of goals, they can earn you as top scorer accolade, but then you know you can add on. What is the mood like as you come on and walk on as a star player for the team and everybody, the whole country, the whole world is looking at you to steer the team forward? Like, uh, what is the mood like? If you're Millicent, uh, put yourself in Millicent's shoes as a top scorer. Right now, she's oh. a top scorer, but she's coming onto the pitch. Uh, do you look on to adding on to the goals, or you're going to manage the game and uh, see whatever comes as long as your team progresses? You know, when you're, you're leading the, the top scorer table, so when you're going to come in a game like that girl, so she's supposed to work hard so that she, can, she, she scores the other goals. That it takes that good accolade. Accolade. Uh, are you interested in any of the teams uh, today, Juliet? Uh, Shimaroons. Uh, because I know you've watched them, you have some of your friends playing there. And then Wakiso Hill could be closer to you, the fact that they're in Wakiso. Are you at all interested in any of the teams? Yes. Seeing one of them go through, which team would that be? Any you, team. You don't have to. Do, you're not looking for any coach as we go into the final remarks. Yes. Uh, for purposes of football, there's a time you say, as a coach, mm. I would love this team to go through. Mm. Between Shima Runes and Wakiso Hill, mm. which team do you think deserves to join Runes in the final? Okay, when I, was start, when I was starting to watch these games, like when it started, I, was, I had no team. But for me, I'm that person who always stick to good football. Like I said, Runes deserved it. But if Shima runs, if it, there's a team to go to the Super League and have that kind of football, to put that competition and also to other teams to play like Shima runs, I would wish Shima runs to go through, not just to win this, but at least to go to Super League so we can have that good competitive game. And at least we know that we can have a team or combine all the Super League teams that because they aim now, it is CAF Champions League. Okay. So, yes, because of the, game, the game, kind of game they're playing. I would wish Shumaroons to go through, but I don't support Shumaroons. As we head to Njeru Technical Center, I want my final remarks from Juliet Nalukenge. Juliet, as a player going onto the pitch, do you normally anticipate that the referee will always get everything right to your side? You know, me, I'm a striker. Whenever I go on a pitch, I don't mind about referees. I just mind that I go. You just mind if the referee points there, then the penalties. Okay. Uh, on the billboard there are the lineups, the substitutes, and again, we are going to see the referees uh, for today's game. Coach Majida Nantanda will be there to digest this at halftime, and so will Juliet Nalukenge, our dear special MVP and lady of the moment. Let's go for the first 45 minutes of the game between Wakiso Hills and Shimaruns in Injeru Technical Center.
welcoming you to another semi-final between Wakiso Hills and Shima Runes. We've already had the first semi-final where Arenas managed to get past Bunyaruguru through a penalty shootout that was interesting where we had Nora Alupo, a striker, go between the sticks and become the custodian for Bunyaruguru at the end of the day deputizing Esther Namaganda, but this time she was not successful. And apparently, Rines walk on to the final. I normally tell people for Rines, they have something to play for. But the Shimaroons go for morale boosting. And a few seconds now, we shall be off. That is their gallant goalkeeper, Akujo. And you can see the word Air Force. I don't know if that is to scare away the opponents. But then Shimaruns have worked so hard to reach here, registering a top scorer in Millicent Namwenge, Namwende. Ah, that is to be exact. Anytime we are about to be off, the Shimaruns will be going from right to left. Actually, Shimaruns will be going from left to right, pardon me. And Wakiso Hill is the team in blue. You can see the striker warming up. That is what you need as a striker sometimes to get you in the mood uh, to try, go, and get what you wanted. They normally wait for the time to clock exactly the time that they had told everybody for kickoff before we can actually start this encounter. Referee sets us off. It is a short pass. Okay. Shima runs are off. Going forward. And we expect that all teams are ready for this because quarterfinals are quarterfinals. So semi-finals are semi-finals, but the best part is to reach the finals. Well, Shimaroons come into the game in a 4-3-3 formation with the diamond. Okay, long kick uh, from Shimaroons from the goalkeeper. That is Akujo Esther, uh, playing a little long and not keeping it on. So it will be a throw-in going a Shimaroon side. And Najunju Lidia will be the player responsible for the throw-in. Taken very quickly. Floated up front. But again, referee says there is something wrong. Could be an offside position. Against Babidi Joelia, who was accelerating at a terrible speed. So. As we talk, Wakiso Hills can now attack through Faith Namudu. Wakiso's play rotates around Faith Namudu. They cannot keep playing. We are going for a free kick. Shima runs at the middle of the park. Naluima and Nagai partnering so well. It's a long one, but goes directly to goalkeeper Zulaika Aikoru, who's also been tremendous for Wakiso Hills. Zulaika decides to go long. Now in the midfield, Maswed away by Adong. It is between Adong and Babidie. She was switching to right. Defended gallantly by Wakiso Hill. The ball is still up, up there. I don't know how coach can assess the first two minutes of the game, but Shima runs normally want to impose their play onto the opponents. Yeah, I think Wakiso now they are intimidated and they are trying to get into the game. You know the first means of kickoff, you are not yet sure every player is like feeling the way she has to feel, depending on her psychological behaviors. But within five minutes, they will be in the game and hopefully we'll have a nice game. It's like Aikoru, custodian for Wakiso Hill. Decides to leave the defender who has a bigger muscle to go long. Ball intercepted at the midfield. We have a half volley just before the center line. She maroons. 
Nantongo trying to venture forward. Shimaruns trying to dribble past their opponents. But Wakiso Hill proving to be a stronger opponent in the final third. And now Shimaruns have a free kick. What you know about women football, the free kicks from longer distances sometimes are scored. And now Shimaruns will embark on getting the first goal. Shima runes will embark on getting the first goal. The referee has just signaled them to go for it. It is a long one, goes to no man's land. Wakiso, Shima runes steal the ball in the midfield. Play adjacent with the square pass. There are interpasses between Inajuko and Nantongo. Again, Shima runes regain possession and Najuka will go for the throw in, targeting Millicent Namwembe. It is a big shot to the goalkeeper, Zulaika Aikoru, who thanks her for giving her such a gift. It is the FUFA Women Allies League, would be the second edition, but in total seventh edition, the first five seasons, it was the top flight, but for a second year running, it is the second tier of women football. In the midfield, Naluima and Najuka manning the midfield so well for Shima Runes plus Adong. I think now everyone needs to concentrate. I wish Maroons could play their game so they can make, give us an entertaining game and force Wakiso Hill to also play the same game. Well, as Wakiso Hills have also gone for a 4 3 3, theirs is a little bit conserved because they have tried to pack the midfield, but we all know why. If you don't pack the midfield and let Shimaroons players run you, Millicent herself can try to hurt you. And so you have to be on your best. And based on their formation, 4-4-3, four, four, it seems Wachiso Hill also has a game approach of attacking in case they do it right. So defending as well as attacking. So the four or two can come and join in with the three and then we can have more numbers in the final third of the opponent. Those in the central can understand the instructions of the coach. Actually, the coach is asking these players not to allow the opponents control the ball while they are there someone being set free they are being set free but apparently shimaroons have failed to follow this one up and it will be a throw in for wakiso hills yes throw in and hopefully should make a very good throw because it has been a problem within these games that some players do not know how to throw the ball and that goes to the coaches throw ins are told to players to do that as well namudu faith fails to get the right throw in so her counterpart in nagai jean has to teach her to go for it they try to go for a shot low driven lose one and it's a chance wasted the coach folding his arms, he knows he has a huge task to get passed through. And now that is the top scorer and also skipper for Shima Runes. Namwembe Millicent with five goals to her name. Can she add on to the tally? We are yet to see. Remember in the Super League, Fazila Iquaput scored eight goals. So Namwembe is just three short of that. To show you that women can really go for an attacking approach to try play better. Ball stolen in the midfield. Wakiso Hills failing to grasp their chance of possession. Yes. I think Miss Saint should do that because she's the target person for this team, Shimaruns. So if she can 
do the needful and score a goal to open up for others also to score, then definitely she will be the top scorer, but as well helping her team to reach the finals, which is very important for today. Gloria. Gloria. It's a long one from the area. Shimaruns continue attacking. It's a dangerous attack coming in from Lilian Veronica. On the left, she's trying to nick it in, ah. but goalkeepers like uh, self hands coach Majida from Zulaika, who yeah. kept her line so well. And definitely, Zulaika kept her position as a goalkeeper, and that was a very poor pass from the, one, the striker. So good for the goalkeeper. Eyes on the ball, which is very important. Very good game reading for the goalkeeper. Free kick at the midfield level for Shima Runes who have so far comfortably controlled and enjoyed possession within the nine minutes of the game. And now they will have Nagai Johan going to put this one inside the box. Nagai goes long and Zulaika just lets this off the pitch because it does not trouble her at all. That is Nagai Johan for you. Off. player of Shima runes yeah like off target she did not put in more thinking while she was playing that ball but again players are still making the same mistake giving her space to be able to kick that long ball towards the goalkeeper which is not good for women football as we know we all know now Livia Namiwanda try to get possession for Wakiso Hill and apparently this is a replay So Maroons is trying to play their game, make it a uh, lot of mobility, movement, and make it, making it wide. I think now they are used. After 10 minutes, I th we are yet to watch very entertaining football. She Maroons Football Club having a slight edge over their opponents, but their opponents are also a slow and a sure team. That is the approach they gave Amuria, who were also a little more comfortable with the ball on the ground. Shima runs. That was a dome in the midfield. Nagai Johan with the ball, trying to drift left. Ball met halfway. Oh. Actually, credit for these young girls from Wakiso Hill. They are young. But at least they are playing the kind of game whereby not help, uh, making Maroons to enjoy their kind of play. So, so far, they are doing better. Millicent, trying to put her super skills to use. Actually, this is not Millicent. This is her colleague in Najuka, Justin Kiza. I'm told they are on the payroll of the government, government payroll, and that is the reason as to why we have them motivated than ever. Whenever they are paying the other officials in the prison's hierarchy, Shimaruns are also normally getting their welfare sorted, so that was between very very crucial in, in women football and all sport like if someone is paid that one is external motivation which will help them to do whatever they can so that they can maintain their payments so would shimaroons and the prison management are doing such a very good job to see that they're also playing these women who are playing football still a good play Play continues. It is 13 minutes so far in the first half. A good play from Wakiso Hill player. 
that is the reaction. If you are to stop the player, the kind of play Maroons is playing, always react and immediately chase. Block yeah. those spaces and they'll find no way of penetrating through your defense. Justin Bidabwa for Wakiso Hills does wonders, but not allowing space to the She Maroons players. And now they have a free kick. She's going to talk a bit long. Her target was Faith Namudu and the likes of Patricia Naiga who are up front. Shimaruns are now attacking at the midfield level. They are looking for Najuko Justin Kiza. Who play? Oh, now, as defenders, you need to have very good game reading and you need to be sure. Now there's a problem with goalkeeper not communicating, otherwise that would have been a brander if the player missed the ball. Well, Bilabwa is now acting as a shock absorber for Wakiso Hill. And just look at the coach for the Maroons. Coach knows that all eyes are on him after the very good quarterfinals he displayed. So he's anxious to see what the players can do. So that's the reaction. <laughs> coach Alex knows that it is imminent. They get the results as early as possible. Now you have Najuka Justin going long. They wanted to pick out Millicent, but she's not yet there. Wakiso Hill in the midfield. They have resorted to the long passes. Actually, they are playing a very good game also. They are opening up, they are moving well, and they are seeing their teammates. So we hope to have a very good game today. Credit to Wakiso, these young girls are really doing That good. is a dumb Jacqueline. She, to, she had drifted on the left and wanted to cross in, but there is just in bit of what she just can't allow you to go through. Mm. And actually, Adong was one of the players who really played well last time due to her ball distribution in the midfield and always looking for Lillian and Nielsen. So good so far for Wakiso because they are denying her chance of free play as she can do it. The battle won over by Wakiso Hill. They are trying to go up front. When you look at Farida Nanyondo, they are trying to set Patricia Naiga. But apparently they don't keep it. She maroons with the ball, Lady and Veronica switching it to the other side, looking for the likes of Babirie. Ball left in the open, she maroons regain possession. It looks like it's going off the pitch, finally kept on. She maroons once again asking a lot of questions, Wakiso failing to answer some of them. Ball in the midfield right again. Dong Jacqueline proving to be key. They have set up Lillian Veronica. Does she find it? Oh. So unlucky. Good play from Shimaruns. The kind of play we expected, an attacking kind of football. And still, we're actually still doing well because last time, at this moment already, the team that we were playing against had considered a goal. But Wakiso made their good homework and they are trying to keep them away from there. Well, Shimaruns have been scorers of goals right from the onset, mm. scoring five goals in one of the matches. Millicent there on your screen, registering a hat-trick on their first day. She's captain and leads by example. Shimaruns setting Veronica up front. Oh. But the referee signals there is something. A throw in. Throw in coming in from Wakiso. That's a territory of oh, Bidabwa. No, it's not a throw in. It's a free kick. It's, yeah, throw in. Yeah, I'm sure it was a throw in. Thought it was. Was that a foul throw? Foul throw. Something coaches should take note of. We've had bad throws from these women and coaches. They should know that also throw-ins are taught in the game of football. Adong Jacqueline, one of those that has been instrumental throughout Wakiso's journey from the group stages to where we are now. Yes, you can hear the coach giving instructions, simple instructions. Play, play. 
you make the game simple. You play the game and to make it simple and you be easier to advance your opponent's half. But if you just confuse yourself by playing balls all over, that's no football. <laughs> Waxo's jersey looks very nice. Very nice. I must admit that blue <laughs> with those patches going through. Actually, looks even very, very, very nice. A nice jersey, of course. Juliet Nalukenge looking at me, giving me an eye that is asking, is Kawempe's jersey not that good also? Well, Juliet, we are talking about the two teams playing. Goalkeeper oh, fumbles with this one. Yes. And apparently saves the day. And still, Fifi, I still want these coaches. Such a, f a dead ball. There should be players who are standing there to confuse the person who is taking. Just direct, just like that. And we already have problems with goalkeepers saving those high long balls. Zulaika Ikoru just saved them. Can she do it again? Ball comes in the oh. midfield. Zulaika Had coming that. out of goal and now they are safe. I think Jilaika is one of the goalkeepers who have actually performed well in this tournament, in this league. Patricia Naiga, ball back to Patricia. She tries to go long. Looking for Slivia. Foul. And Farida Nanyonjo, who are the two strikers for Wakiso. That is Millicent. Fouling. <laughs> You see now Wachiso seems to have disorganized maroons such that the now they are fouling. So that means Maroon uh, Wachiso is playing a very good game as per now, unexpectedly. Very good homework done by the coaches. And if Wachiso maintains that, that means we might be surprised that Wachiso can even score than what we thought of Shimaroons. But the only thing Shimaroons has to do is to continue and maintain their kind of play. Okay. It's a good play in the midfield. Just like Adongo, Anita, if they connect and see Millicent and Lillian, Millicent on the right, on the left side. Adong for you. Looking out for shot eight, who is Najuka Justin Irene. Oh, good play. And then from the back side, Nantonga Diana had come to make that run. And that is actually good for football to see a left back or right back coming in to support in the midfield or even go through this kind of football and you can see that now players and women football can play the kind of football that men can play Just as well. Justin Bidabwa responsible for the throw in. Going on for Patricia Naiga but they don't keep possession. Shimaruns are attacking. And look at that penetrative pass. So Anita Babirie giving the ball to Nantong and Justin fighting for the ball. Wakiso win over it. And so far, the Wakiso is really doing well. Unexpected. unexpected. Wakiso is surprising us with the kind of game they are playing today. They did their homework. I think coaches know what exactly they have come to do. Surprisingly, Wakiso is giving us what we do not expect. Justin Bilaba goes wrong. Ball is not kept. A dangerous attack here coming in from Wakiso here. Maroons can breathe at the back. Because Nantongo and Naju Njulidia are trying to defend amicably. Yeah. Shima runs in the midfield. And Wakiso is much more in the midfield. They are doing that kind of marking. Everyone is finding where the yellow shirt is. Best kind of play to stop a team like Shima runs. That's the way you have to play. Ujo Esther, the custodian for Shima runs, goes long. But the ball is made halfway by Wakiso Hills, who have Faith Namudu operating on the left wing. She's operating along that line at left back and left wing. She's responsible for the throw-ins and dictates play at which Wakiso Hills are play at. Ball played off the pitch and again, a player in Nagai will try to throw this onto the pitch, throw on the pitch, looking out for the likes of Najuka sending the ball forward, but wasted chance as it is a goal kick for Wakiso Hill. A wasted chance indeed, so it shows that Maroons is trying to find a way 
Wakiso here has disorganized them, and that which is good for Wakiso. And you can see the coach is not happy with what the team is doing. So, Coach Alex standing on his toes because he knows they are on tension and will need a lot of work to break down Wakiso, who are doing everything they have in their powers to try not be worn down by. Yes, and actually, so far they are doing well. Uh, Wakiso trying to play a long pass. Oh. Wakiso, why? Why? Go long, but that is a misguided missile. Exactly. You don't place. shoot when you know you have the victim somewhere. I think it's wasted energy, but good try. Well, Coach Kamiya Swale earlier on was showing signs of frustration because his team could not live to expectations and probably some of the instructions he gave the girls, they are not following. That is why they are being sent away by Wakiso Hills. As we look, goalkeeper... Akujo Esther saves the day ball now in the midfield at the midfield level. Anita, responsible for that, tries to go long, but very good cover coming in from the Wakiso footballers. Thrown by Wakiso Hills. I think the game is 50-50. Both teams are trying to see how they can penetrate through the, the opponent's defensive third. They had all the good things like they're doing both. They're defending as well as attacking. They know what the importance of having a goal in these semi-finals. So it's going to be free kick. Wakiso are uh, trying to defend this. Shima runs on it. And now the referee signals for a free kick. Citing a, a foul. A foul. Maroons have been reckless at the front field. Apparently, Naluima Kautara has been reckless. And now Wakiso as going to say Wakiso Giants. And now Wakiso Hill <laughs> will get the free kick. They don't use it well. And Some fumbling here at the back. Adong tries to get the ball away. Wakiso Hill with the ball. Failing to get past the last defender. And now all we have is a throw in. Okay, Maroon's in possession with the ball. That is a very penetrative pass. Oh, hard luck. That was a very good pass. Very, well, very good. It is like they had let the prisoner lose. Millicent was attacking outright from the left side. They are just lucky. The assistant referee waved for offside. Otherwise, it would be a little too bad for Wakiso Hill, who had defended so poor and left the spaces. And then I would also say that if Wakiso Hill can tell those players to utilize the chance of dead balls, you don't always have to play a long pass to nowhere. At least they should try to play short passes when they are starting such free kicks. Throw in for Shima Runes. Shimarins are still trying to find a way how to beat and score because they really need a goal. And I still have to give credit to Wakiso. They have disorganized Shimarins that now they are trying to plan B. Adong throws the ball off the pitch. 
So it will be a throw in for Wakiso Hill. Referee signals for play to resume a free kick. Not a free kick, it was a throw in to the Maroons. Yeah, it's really she Maroons. She Maroons. In the midfield, all the way. Najuko Justin. And good interpassing. They're trying to connect within the middle third. Sending it away to Nagai, who is operating on the right. Nagai sends it more up front, looking for Anita Babirie. It's a combination between Anita and Nagai. Through pass, looking for Millicent. She's not there. Maroons failing to keep possession. And now Wakiso Hill with the possession. They can try to attack. They have only one player up front, Patricia Farida Nanyonjo. She sits down. Referee has no time for her. Najuka Justin Adong with the ball. Going a little bit right. Looking for Najuka Justin. The ball is lingering in the midfield. Whoever can kick it gets it. Now that's yeah, that's the problem. These players need to concentrate. They shouldn't think about so much of how they have not yet scored. So that they can play their game. But so far is trying to connect. They're trying to play their kind of game. And Wakiso just came to destroy them, to disorganize them. Jalinda Nagawa, a problem for Shima Runes, but the goalkeeper, Akupo Esther, comes in to save the day. Akupo Esther with a long one. It is ballooned and will be a problem for one to control. Millicent with receiving this one. Oh, good play. Defended gallantly by Justin Bidabwa. That was a good plan. Very good Justin game Bidabwa drifts and comes to save the day. She did well, ex actually. That's a very good game. Actually, that is Farida Namirimu, and the captain. who is also their captain. Yeah. That is taking time to drift from the left to come to the right and saving the day as a water break is being called in Millicent walks slowly to her coach she knows she has to see her, the team around but this time she's finding a hard opponent as they are refueling their tanks to try come and play the last 15 minutes of the game as it looks it is 50 50 and still up for grabs for every team exactly and you can see the players are also disappointed but they shouldn't be stressed now. They should process everything and try to plan for the game. They still have an upper hand, but only if they can concentrate and play their kind of game, not to be distracted by Wakiso, because Wakiso just came to disorganize them. And I hope the coach knows that and also talks to them, as well as the coach for Wakiso, encouraging her players to continue to play the way they are playing and they would surprise people in this game because a good play from Shimaruns very good passing players connecting no that was not a good idea. They should concentrate and play. As we see Shimaruns playing and trying to connect, but today they have lost it because of stress and disorganized somehow, thinking that they can end the quarter, of, uh, the half first half without scoring. A little bit of disorganization, but they should keep with their game. Well, we expect a long kick across the midfield. That is for. Wakiso Hill, who have had a very good goalkeeper in Zlai Kaikoru, she tries to go long. Ball at the midfield level, Stella Kawala is the player that tried to get it, but the referee signals for a foul and a free kick up front for Shima Runes Football Club, who are trying to use their free flowing football and try to squeeze in within those small spaces and to try to get the better of Wakiso Hills. Shima Runes will have Anita Babiria on this one. Anita Babiria looking to go long. And of course having a very good technique of high long balls. So far, oh, well done by the, the defender. That was a good game reading again. The and defender, defender kicking away. Also captain. Very good defender so far. Very, with very good kicking anything that comes to her territory. I think she can even kick air. Uh, yeah. 
because at the moment she doesn't want anything at their territory. Yeah, that's how defenders should react, like just kick it away if possible or pass it to your teammate. You should be sure whenever you want to kick it. Follow, follow. Oh, that was good play within the final third, the 18 yard box, oh, okay. Again, the referee signals for a corner. Shimaru is putting some little pressure on Wakiso Hill. And apparently, Narima for Shimaru is being the person responsible for that pressure. She decides to go long. It's a corner. They try to drift in and apparently, it is a big clearance away from goal. But Wakiso Hill don't want anything yellow. Don't want anything yellow. If it was in normal life, we would say they don't want any glimpse of the sun <laughs> in their territory. And it's the right play because in the defense you just have to destroy. So they want all the nurses to go up front. And, but here in their defense, and that's how they, the only way they can keep a team like Shimaroons away from their defensive third. And so far they are playing that kind of football that we don't even expect how to play. Doing well able to, co to contain Shimaroons. Good tricks on the ball. Very good tricks on the ball. Oh my god, that was nice. That was nice. If someone has been schooled. <laughs> she would even be made to eat grass. But as we talk of it, Farida Nanyonjo being one of the players involved in those skills, skill showing and displaying, that was good. Oh, if the coach says it's good, then yeah. it's indeed good. Mm. Me, all I could come to playing was putting up a packet of milk <laughs> and putting rubber bands around them so I did not feel this modern ball on my legs. So when the coach says it's really good, just know it's really good. In the midfield, Adongo tries to condense. She fails. Ten minutes to end of first half. Shima runs, looking for their breakaway. Millicent adjacent. And the referee says there is a slight push. Millicent brought up by Jalida Nagawa. But it is against Millicent. Maybe it's a push because it is it's a ball for Wakiso. Okay. Foul against Mil uh, Millicent. And now this is how she needs to concentrate. As a striker, I don't need to foul. You just expect an opponent to foul you. What you have to do is to look at the ball and do the needful. No, oh, so close. Throw in by Shimaruns. Another throw in against Wakiso Hills. Shimaruns are trying to play that kind of game. But credit goes to Wakiso, to Wakiso Hills, who are trying also to block all the gaps to see that Shimaruns cannot penetrate and play the penetrative kind of play, penetrative runs or passes into their, into their defensive third. Uh, someone is injured. We have a Shimaruns footballer, looks like it is not Millicent. It should be some and operating left back. Okay. She is down as you have Najuko just bouncing the ball. I love the word one force. <laughs> what does that mean? Because we have very many forces. When they say one force, I don't know, maybe it's the first force that the prisons need to look at. Oh, it's the only force. Because for me, I relate that to air force. Yes. I relate that to the forces. Mm -hmm. And when you say one force, those with maroons mean they are going for the trophy. Exactly. But they have Wakisho and Rene's hey, hey. uh, as, as an opaque object against oh. them. I think that's a very good motivating oh. one. Najuko one goes long. Zulaika has to be called to work, but defended gallantly by Jalida Nagawa and Farida Namirimu. The combination at the back for Wakiso. And it's tremendous. And even how the way Farida is moving as a defender, knowing the distance between her teammates trying to read the game, she's doing... Oh, no. No, it's not a goal. It's out. I thought... Oh, my God. I thought it was a goal. Following the clapping. <laughs> yes. The credits, the appreciation. Yes. I think it was for a, mo a very good move that was woven by Shimaroons, 
That is why you see the goalkeepers who like are wondering why they are leaving spaces. Apparently didn't go in. But those watching love good moves, so they clapped. <laughs> and for once I saw oh where had it passed. I, I was like, where did this ball go? I, Only to get it at the backside coach. Mm -hmm. You said the goal. I uh, because the way it, the flight of the ball seems like I almost doing nothing. I thought it was a goal, but good enough this was out. And Zlaika has all the right to complain to her teammates. They need to block those gaps. They shouldn't give space to the opponent. Someone taking that ball again another the way we need a wall there and see. So they shouldn't just give them that big space for anyone to kick the ball right into goal. Oh, that was good, but off target. That was close. Yeah. Millicent again, our usual suspect, getting ahead on this one. I and like lucky for her, it is off target and does not yield anything. But you realize that Jalida Nagawa, shot five, was just there neck to neck with her. Not giving us space to shoot, Shimaruns have given her the foul. And when you see Shimaruns fouling, it means that they are really disorganized. Wakisa has done a very good job of disorganizing this good team, like we all th thought. And Millsent, I like Millsent's energy, she's always there, she's looking for the goal, just like a better striker. But Farida, the captain of Wakisa, is doing her job also. Very good game reading, very good reaction. She doesn't give space or gap to any player to do the nonsense in her face of third. Wakiso on this one, I'll try to nick the ball back in. Stolen at the midfield level. The midfield has all been about Najuka and Adong. Najuka, Joan and Adong who have tried to bring the likes of Naga and Narima for Shima runes. That is Najuka for you. She has a hairstyle like for Emmanuel Okui. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> He's the one who loves to have that pointed mohawk. Mm. Long, looking for Millicent. Drifted away, mistake at the back. Oh. Shima Runes trying to weather up front. And Shima Runes. By Waki that is a dangerous territory for a free kick. But at least out of the 18 yard box, out, slightly out. Millicent causing problems for the defenders. And Farida Namirim this time miscuing, not reading the game well. She almost beat her at her own game at the backside. This time the free kick is a little nearer. And the goalkeepers, like Aikor, who has been tremendous, will have a huge task in trying to stop this. Given the fact that we've seen goals from such distance just go in in the Super League and now in the Women Elite League. And all that matters is the war they are going to do. They have to make. It's the war that they have to make. It's the only way that can distract Nantongo, who is going to take this a little bit far. Very dangerous area for a player like Nantong with a very good technique of passing a long pass. Let's see what Zulaika can do here. Oh. Defended gallantly by the wall that was a, a little bit hard. They waited so well, did not need to jump. Just stand there, put your body up there, and the ball will bounce on it. Shimaruns will have to throw in right now. Responsible for the throw in was Najunju. Again, it's a throw in for Shimaruns. Nagai on this one now. They failed to keep a ball on play. And now the resilient Wakiso Hills, who have tried to stop Shimaruns at their own game, will go for it. That is Namudu Faith for you going long. They don't keep it. Millicent almost received it in the heart of goal, failing. And now Wakiso Hill will have to do their own work. The ball, I like that. I just so surprised with these young girls from Wakiso Hills. They really did their homework. And this is the beauty of the game. Football can surprise people and Wakiso is just surprising everyone, the way they are contained. Lily and Veronica just wanting to nick in on the left side, not giving the chances to try get it right. That is Najuka for you. Whenever you see a Mohawk, you know it's Najuka. As coach Kamiaswale, he sits there on the bench, but you can see he's not settled. He knows he has a lot of work to do. 
He is the coach for Wakiso Hills. And so far he's doing better and doing well. He bears C. Lillian. So they've cut her off. Najuka again with a throw in. Good, yeah, good play from Wakiso. Wakiso is going to be sub. Oh, those are the things, tricks on the ball. Just disorganize the opponent and they don't know where the ball is. I like the way Wakiso girls are doing it and also enjoying the game, using the ball the way they want and not forgetting to show people that even women can play football, they can make tricks on the ball, they have good skills, they can pass, their techniques are good. Very entertaining game if someone starts to play like that. It's a throw in for Shima Runs. Bad, bad throw. As this game goes on, and after this tournament, I think coaches should put in, in mind that throw ins are taught to coach to players. Once you teach them how to throw, they will, of course, throw well because they are also good. It's good. Throw ins can, initi can initiate attacks sometimes, they help in the game. So it's better they start teaching players that because we've had so many bad throws. Long out. throw in, anticipated by Wakiso Hills. She tries to go long in Justin Bidabwa, but that goes to no man's land. Again, it's a throw in in her territory. Justin will be looking to go for goal, looking for Patricia Naiga. Justin regains the ball in the midfield. They try to kick it. Stella Kawala coming in and Shimaruns defending gallantly. Where is this one heading the ball to? To our only half. Wakiso Hill, stolen by Adong. She decides to go long looking for Millicent. They are ballooning to her territory. But apparently the referee decides that Millicent did yeah, not... Millicent, very disappointed. She wants to see herself scoring all her teammates. They are 40, already 45 minutes. The assistant referee shows two minutes of added time. That is Justin Bilaba for you, taking it long but not bothering Akujo Esther, the goalkeeper for the forces, Shimba Roots for the prisons actually. Who is waiting for this one? Lydia and Veronica on the left, Millicent chasing, Millicent cannot get this. Hard luck, yeah. Almost run into the camera person, but instead a she ran into the wire mesh that is surrounding the artificial turf in Injeru. And now they'll have to go long. That is Farida Namirim going long. Ball kept not far. Shima runs. If they receive this, then Wakiso are in trouble. Oh. And now the ball has been headed away by Faith Namudu, who has been urged to come up by Sarah Namatovu, who has been a little silent. Faith Namudu supposed to be the starter and the creative element for Wakiso Hills. But today, she has not been given the gap. Actually, Maroons is bringing the game to Wakiso, but Wakiso absorbing and consolidating, also managing the game so well. And that's all how they have to play for you. That's how you have to play to destroy all the attacking-minded kind of thinking to beat a team like Shima Runes. So Wakiso did very good homework and they really know oh, that was a replay for the foul but what, oh my god still it the goes same thing in. Pipi. It goes in. Shima Runes drop first blood uh, in 200 minutes. Shima Runes have just scored a goal. Is it Naluima? I see a jersey four. Yeah, Is it a Naluima and should have been a blockbuster yeah. from a long distance? And she's crying. Emotional, emotional. She didn't expect it. That's good. You see the beauty of the game? Whatever happened Tears to of joy, Zulaika of Aikoru. Aikoru has been the mother and father, the custodian. But just look, look at Adongo to Naluima. At and Naluima goes long. Oh, yeah. the goalkeeper even had fingers on the ball. Yes. But she fails to handle the ball family. Or even she just shrug it, it away. away. Yeah, she failed to punch it away. Not to hold it. She cannot handle that. She maroons. Same. Oh. I've just got a yellow ticket <laughs> and one leg to the finals. Rines is watching. And Rines is saying, whoever comes, comes. 
the oh. referee stops play after 45 minutes. Whereas Shima Runes left it a little late, but they puffed probably and asked a lot of questions. Wakiso Hills are really disappointed because they tried to come. Uh, there is a way they tried, but at last they gave up. And it's the one force in Shima Runes, not Millicent this time, but Naluima responsible for that long shot. It is 1 0 at half time. We shall go for a short break. And we'll come back with Coach Majida and Juliet Nalukenge to break this one for us. Good afternoon. What does it mean to be closer together? It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. Closer together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's the warmth of home or the beginning of something new. There's magic in sharing the things that we learn because it's those things that bring us close together. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Yeah. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development, and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. COVID-19, chidja kubwa. If we get vaccinated now, observe social distancing, wear masks properly, sanitize or wash our hands with soap and water regularly. Together we can defeat this enemy. Management Information System, TMIS, is one of the innovations the Ministry of Education and Sports has rolled out to have all teachers register online. This is in line with the spirit of the national teacher policy to professionalize the teaching profession and the Ministry's efforts to collate teacher data in a single database for better teacher management. Join us as we host officials of the Ministry of Education and Sports to discuss the teacher management information system. The show is sponsored by the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, under the Norwegian Teacher Initiative in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Sports.
My name is Mkunda Felix. I'm Robert Chidabo Nyonyitono. It's glory for Uganda for the first time in history. Anything in sports, join me. Wake up to Good Morning Uganda, weekdays on UBC. Live from now Avenue in UBC Studios, this is Good Morning Uganda. Technical Njeru uh, Center, Fufa Technical Center in Njeru, but any of uh, the words can be reversed uh, to mean the same thing. It's an artificial turf, and we are seeing the second semi final between Ashima uh, Runes and Wakiso Hills. Uh, the match has ended after 45 minutes with Wakiso Hills conceding a little bit very late. Naruima did slot in that goal, and that means that they have a lot of homework to do with the 15 minutes uh, that they should use uh, to rest. It has been a game of two teams. They have been neck to neck. It has been direct attacks, but the goalkeepers did the best. The defenders did they could until they could not anymore. Zulaika was beaten to that goal, and Shimaruns now have a chance at qualifying, but then they have to play the next 45 minutes. I'm called Fifi Fiona Pink, Nick Tok Topaz, uh, Mami Sky, Samuel Elisha Simon. Uh, in studio, I'm joined. Uh, by uh, Coach Majida Nantanda and Juliet Nalukenge. Uh, Coach Majida has been uh, commentating the game alongside me, so we shall start with Juliet. Juliet, again, how are you? Um, I normally want to, tell, to ask you because I just want to see that smile. There's so many young players that believe in you, so many of your fans and followers are really delighted to see you on UBC TV. And my simple question is, You've been watching at the first 45 minutes of uh, the game. What do you make of those two teams? Uh, so far, I've watched the first half. Yes. Shimaruns is a good team. Shimaruns is a good team. Yeah, they can pass the ball. They can even the cont contain the ball two minutes. They, they have in the ball. So, uh, Juliet loves teams that contain the ball. Shimaruns did it, and uh, the likes of Millicent did that coach. Yes. You talked about the midfield of mm -hmm. uh, Millicent. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, she's a striker, but sometimes comes into the midfield to drop yes. and uh, get those balls. Mm -hmm. uh, then she has a dong. She has the likes of Nagai mm -hmm. and then Najuka. Najuka proving to be one of those that is uh, pushing the team forward. What exactly. has Shimaruns done right to manage scoring a goal late in the half? I've liked the resilience for Shimaruns. They they maintain their kind of play. Even when they were distracted, even when, they, when a team makes you to open up, there's no way you can block the passes. So there was no interception. They tried and tried that game until we saw that beautiful game, for, that beautiful goal from Naluima. Okay, um, Juliet, as a player, is one goal enough to put you down? Oh, you think Wakiso Hills are now in the dressing room are telling their players that we can also go and equally score that goal? One goal is not enough. You know, I know what I saw here is the dressing room thing, but second half we can make it, you can make equalize, then you go to the penalties. So Shimaruns, they need to work hard so that they can score like two goals. They can score like a two goals. If you're Wakiso Hills and you're playing a team that is freely passing the ball, and for you, you come, you have your own approach, but you've not managed to break down. As a player, of course, there are tactics the coach gives you, but as a player, what can you do? To change your side's result on your own. As a player, me, yeah. you know me, I'm a striker. So if, if second half comes, me, I go looking at the goal to save my team. You go looking at the ball, but what about the supply? If the, the supply. balls are not coming through for you, what happens? I drop back, then I that I get the ball. Okay, that's what a good striker does. You look for the ball and try to shoot. If it's not there, you go in. Uh, before I go to court, Juliet. We've seen some of the strikers in this tournament, the FUFA Women Elite League, uh, decide to go and get in between the sticks, become goalkeepers. Apart from the striking role, what other role can you be given? And uh, you can actually achieve successful for your team. The other role. Yeah. Apart from striking, what other role 
I, like, can you be comfortable with if you're called to duty? Because we've seen Noah Rupo in the last game. She was like, let Namaganda sit down. Let me go and get the penalties for you. And she managed to get one. <laughs> you only know how to strike. Uh, yes. Maybe, maybe I can drop in the weak side. Yeah, you can be a winger, number yeah. seven, anyway, number 11, yeah. uh, if you go by numbers. But in modern football, uh, anybody uh, can be that versatile. So that is some of the action that was there. Coach, yes. uh, back to you. Yeah. We are going into second half. Mm. What can Wakiso Hills do to try to come back in the game? Or what can Shimaroons do to come and kill off this game completely so that they join Rene's for the finals come Thursday? Actually, I'll start with Shimaroons. They have, uh, now let me start with Wakiso. Yeah, Wakiso. They tried to maintain Shimaroons. Yeah. Only that they defended well like with Farida. She had very good game reading. She was destroying everything. She didn't even want anyone to do any nonsense within her defensive area. But they are wasted up front. They opt to take those long passes to nobody. Another thing with dead balls, if the ball is far away, with a long, somewhere far, you don't have to always play those long balls. Start the game. Play a short pass to your next uh, teammate so that the game can flow. In women, like what I emphasize them, let them have that sense of saying we are playing the game forward. And then they try to do those interpasses, short, long passes. Let them open up when they have the game, create spaces for their teammates. And they can do those penetrative passes through the opponent's defense, which is Shimarons. Once they do that, with Farida destroying everything, maintaining her defense, commanding, and like actually is doing a very good job, like even the goal that she has scored, you, don't, you excuse her for that. Let them defend, but mind so much of attacking because this is a semi final. If you don't score, you, 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 that's the end of you. Then with Shimaroons, Shimaroons need to maintain the way they are playing. I've liked the energy for Millsaint. Today, Lillian is not in, but Naluima, Anita, and Adong, they are still supplying, supplying the game. But if Lillian can come in as a right left midfielder to help and get the ball and then spread out for them to play, because now we are not seeing her like we saw her in the previous game. Shimaroons can score two goals, but again, Wakiso Hill, if they don't waste chances up front within the final third of the opponents, they can also score. You know, football is tricky. That's the beauty. You, uh, Wakiso can surprise us and score, but now with this game, the only team to win is the team that has an attacking mind, attacking minded. We are about to go back to the FUFA Technical Centre in Njeru for the, the second half or the 45 minutes of the game, the last ones. Uh, Juliet Nalukenge. Yes, please. It's the dressing room. It's half time. You're being led. What is the coach telling the players? You know, me, me my coach is Mr. Ibo, Mr. Kata. Whenever we are in the dressing room, second half, he always tells us to remove pressure on ourselves. We just concentrate. We pass the ball because we are leading. So we have to maintain the game. We pass the balls, concentrate. As a mere striker, he always tell me that whenever you face the goal, you just shoot. So I also tell those Shimaron players, strikers, whenever they face the goal, let them shoot. Or work. So he let them shoot, they will get the goal. I've seen you with an armband before. The coach has done their part. If the coach uh, talks to the players, you as a skipper, what do you tell the fellow players? We are being led. So how do we approach the, uh, the second half? I can tell that, them that we can make it. We can contain that green. So that let's, let's remove pressure on ourselves. We can make it. Okay, let's head back to FUFA Technical Center in Njeru. Coach Majida will be joining me to give you the commentary. Runes leading with that goal through Naluima. 
And now Wakiso needs to know that they have a lot on their plate. Goalkeeper and striker will have to face one another. But apparently the Shimaroon's goalkeeper Akulo Esta saves the day and can have the Shimaroon's kick the ball forward. Ball on the header of Stella Kawala. Shimaroon's get this ball. They are trying to sneak one and two. Lily and Veronica failing to keep the ball inside the pitch. And now they will have to throw. Justin Bida was throws this very long in the midfield. Shimaroons, remember, have tried to get all the possession. Shimaroons, Anita being the recipient on this one, again attacking through the left. Shimaroons now going long. It is out of their game. They love to normally freely. Najuka trying to look out for Millicent, but Millicent did not make that run. And Laika Aikoru will be the one to kick this one forward. Wakiso Hills looking for the equalizer. Yeah, and they can't if they just concentrate and maintain what they have been playing for the last 45 minutes, however they, they considered, which is okay. They can surprise Shimarunza and score. And then we see another entertaining game. Lilian now. That is a very good pass to Lilian. Penetrative but slow for her teammate. And it's a throw in for Shimarunz. Recommendable job done by the captain of Wakiso Hill. Farida. Farida is a good, very good defender. If natured, given a chance to develop, hopefully she's young as she's seen. She will be a very good defender in future. Long pass. Shima runs attacking from the right. Nagaijin being the player responsible for that. But remember, they also have. Here we go. Uh, the way Maroons is playing, they're still stressed. I don't know why they need to concentrate. There's no need of kicking those high long balls for, for nowhere. They should maintain and play their kind of game. Throw in for Wakiso. Ball up in the air. Wakiso nick knocking and uh, trying to get uh, their possession Good right. Skill. Good skills. Yeah, tricks at on the, the ball. level. Sarah Namatovu. But ball stolen in transit. Nagaijin oh. giving it to. <laughs> that was nice. Very good trick on the ball. She just Nadjuka took a Justin. I don't kick it very long. Looking for Millicent. Uh, I don't did a very good trick on the ball. She dragged on the ball from behind. And then again, she had the ball in position. That's the kind of the game where you can see that a player at least. She understands the game. She's free with the ball. Promising players. Farida Namirimu could just not allow her to get away with it. And now Najunju Lydia decides to throw long, looking for Millicent. But this will go to Zulaika Aikoru, their goalkeeper. Zulaika with the ball. She has been beaten once so far in the first half. Decides to go to the midfield, looking for Sarah Namatov. Namatov trying to chase the ball. Wakiso Hills. Marking in their zones. Zone. Marking in their zones. That is a very good run. Anita Babiri with the run. Anita causing problems. But Wakiso with this off. And it will be a throw in at the front field. For Shima Runes. Shima Runes already in a comfortable place. Though not extra comfortable. But they would love to defend their goal or add on another one. And after that, that will mean that they can go join Rines in the finals. But they have to first get past Wakiso, who are also a very big team. They have a player down. the knee. The way Farida played and played that ball out, if you are looking for a defender, Farida is a defender that has some attributes for a defender. That's the physique. She has good height, the mass, the body is good, and she has very good game reading.
like I was saying, she has very good game reading and her reaction is good. So far, Freida is giving trouble, working together with her teammates, trouble to Maroons, and that's why they have managed to keep it still 1 0 in these 50 minutes. Let's Ah, uh, a replay for the first half game. I thought it was a goal, but it was over the bar. Very good kick, long ball kicking technique. Medical team is taking out one of the Wakiso Hills players. And it seems we, to be serious. We're not yet sure if she's coming back. But now, Maroons, she go for a throw in, a long one. Second in the box, looking for Veronica on the left. Adong also on the right, trying to get this. Shimaruns walking through, bring back the ball. Planning from there on up. Adong trying to nick this in. And goalkeeper Slaika fumbles on this one. She is lucky, it's slightly poor ball handling. Slightly ball goes handling. above the bar. You don't catch the ball like that. Veronica of Shima Roots. Frustrated it didn't get in. She wanted that to go in. We have Najuka bringing this in. Again Zulaika fumbles but finally gets it. Shima Roots causing problems and Zulaika saving Wakiso twice in a minute yeah. Zulaika, Zulaika has done what she has to do but still the way she's hold, trying to handle the ball is not proper if there was a quick, atta, uh, quick striker for Maroons that would be a goal you don't just drop the ball within your area just punch it away or hold it and catch it from me if, uh, if Lillian had gone for power, explosive, I don't think like had a chance to save. And Coach Alex is not yet done with Wakiso. He's trying to prepare other players to come on. Trying to change his tactics. Trying to see that at least they can score a goal to be safe. Because anything can happen in football. Wakiso can surprise them with a goal and then everyone would be Shima runes are uh, trying to go a little bit longer waiting for the rebound Babidye waiting on this one trying to get back the possession Shima runes here fighting for the ball Wakiso can finally get to it Stella Kawala but again Maroon still back the ball Adon trying to drift a little right Najunju Lydia being the recipient on this one they are attacking Wakiso Hills and Shimaruns play the ball off the pitch. Babidie Joel. Babidie. Babidie has a very good physique, has good height. I think it's now when you look at the scouts, actually, the way you see some players. Chomgisha Winnie is the player that comes on for Shimaruns. Chomgisha Winnie coming on for Shimaruns. And I think she's being brought on to look for that second goal. Winnie and Joan is the player that came off. Nagai Joan. Confirmation of Chomgisha Winnie coming on. I just look at Babidie. Very tall. She's a giant compared to her counterparts. Very good physique. And that is enough to scare her away, the opponents. <laughs> Definitely. Now she has a very good actually. So far again, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, the goalkeeper well, is not the well. goalkeeper is not feeling well. The yeah. Shimaruns goalkeeper Akupo Esther. Whatever happened to her, you can see Babidia signaling something, talking to Lydia. But the medical team will now have uh, to look at her. You remember goalkeepers have that lucky city. I think it. Oh. Oh, 
I think it's a knock. And I th uh, I'm sure coaches and all the people on women football, they know that concussion is one of the injuries for women in football. Hopefully it's not dangerous. Faith Namudu, who earlier was walked off by the medical team, comes back onto the pitch. Remember, she's one of those that ignites play, that creates the chances. Today she has been stopped because apparently Nagai, who is now off, was operating so well for the visiting team. Okay. The game resumes. Goalkeeper is okay. Shiri Maroons are trying to penetrate through the defensive third of Wakiso, who trick on the ball. The way Wakiso Hill players are playing, just the way they have to contain and block all the spaces for Shuma Rooms. They are doing a very good job so far. 57 minutes passed onto this encounter. She goes long in Justin Bidabwa, ball back at the center of defense. Jarida Nagawa trying to get that past their opponents, but Najuka Justin cannot allow that, and so the ball changes sides. It is Wakiso defending through Namudu. Actually, it was Namir, Namudu is just returning, and now that is their gallant captain, Farida Namirimo, who is too tall. With but very good physique, very good game reading, but at least Faida should know that the boys are not always kicked forward. She can also try to build from the back with her teammates, even the goalkeeper, so they can't switch play and play on the other end, other than forcing a pass to the end where actually they are being marked. Naju and Julidia earlier on tried to take on Wakiso, but she failed. So it is Shima Roots now attacking in the midfield. A dog keeps chasing, running to the left. Ball through to her. They are passing. This is Lydia and Veronica trying to shoot. Good backtracking coming in from Wakiso. Hard luck, hard luck for Shima Roots. That was a very good penetrative pass. And actually, a very good penetrative run. That was a very good move for Shimaruns. But unfortunately, the ball was kicked. Adong away. has been responsible for bringing down Patricia Nakiaga Naiga. Actually, Patricia Naiga has been brought down, and her coach is wondering why the referee is not issuing out yellow cards. A free kick for Akiso. Hope she's not playing for a long ball to no, end nowhere, but at least to start. Oh no, the way the players are positioned themselves, of course. The only option she has is a long ball, but I wish a player would come and they play. Short passes because when you just play like that, definitely you go back. Long one. Veronica wanting to put a log on it. Finally stolen through her. Veronica and Adong, they both have the same hairstyle and are both teaming up at the midfield level to try to get something for the Shima Runes Football Club, one force. Veronica nipped throughout the way. Veronica again steals a possession. Ball goes to Bavide Jolin, who was drifting from the left wing. Ball stolen halfway. Shima Runes regained okay. possession. Billy said can get her legs onto the ball. Uh, trying to dress the opponents. That is a dog for you. They will try to shoot. Confirmation of Babidi's yellow card. As you realize that now Wakiso can breathe. Not for a long time. Shima Runes still attacking. In the midfield, Lydia tries to get her feet on the ball. And apparently controls by holding the ball. It's a free kick to Wakiso Hills. And that was a good, a very good play, but again, the ball was intercepted by Farida. Farida is doing a very good job in the, at the back. If it wasn't for her, I think we'd witness another goal for Shimaru. 
that lady on your screen, Namirim, is the reason as to why she maroons are leading. She scored within added minutes of the first half. That is Narima for you. Another is attacking, playing it wide, which is good. Trying to put. Yes. is trying to penetrate to Akiso's defensive third. It's a throw in. Again, it's Wakiso here. Goalkeeper talking to Lydia. Maybe for time wasting or something else. Wakiso here is defending in their own half. And now Shimarun steals the ball. It's dangerous play. Shimarun is now you must mix this in. And the captain uh -huh. Shoot. has to be called uh -huh. to come and help. Oh, uh -huh. slightly above the bar. Yes. Shimarun is living dangerously. Shimarun is living. Anita is trying to get herself on the score sheet. She had a very good opportunity of scoring, but she opted for power. And if she had scored, yeah. then Wakiso would be parking by now because the second goal would prove to be a killer instinct to the tie. Veronica sneaking this for Adong. Adong sends it to Millicent. Millicent gives it away. Narima again wanting to shoot. Again. Well done. Good game reading. Very good interception by Farida. You seen that? Farida and uh, Zulaika teaming up to save the team. Ball goes long. It is Shimaruns against Wakiso who have now been muscled away from the midfield because it's all about Shimaruns. Veronica is sending it a little bit more wide. Shimaruns again ball being found here. Veronica trying to get it throughout and apparently she is muscled away. Referee signals for a goal kick. Yeah, goal kick. Someone looks tired. Jalida Nagawa, shot five, looks like has done her part and is asking the ref, the coach to bring in a substitute because it looks like she cannot continue. That is the header earlier on and that is when Anita opted for power instead of accuracy. She had just placed that a little lower. lower she would be sending Wakiso parking ball in the midfield. They are trying to nick that in. Patricia Naiga failing to keep possession for Wakiso Hills and now who has the ball it is Veronica to Adong her hair mate. I see Wakiso is trying to do all possible to see that they don't consider another goal before they score. So far they are doing well but they have to score if they are to proceed to the next level. As much as they are trying to defend they also need to think of attacking because with this you only have to score to win and advance to the next level. Shimarun's goalkeeper just comfortable with the ball. And the long ball played. I wish these players as well they can think of building from the back. Veronica tries to leap up to get possession of the ball. That is a poor clearance, giving the opponents an edge to try throw deep in your half. And that demonstrates tiredness. They're exhausted, of course. They are stressed. But they need to come back in the game. Just concentrate and tell their, themselves that we still have 25 minutes to go. It's not yet over until it's over. Okay, Wakiso Hills trying to look for the equalizer. 
they fail in that particular attempt. Veronica tries to steal the ball at the midfield level, looking out for Millicent, who is all alone. Millicent, who is also a little clever. Millicent may get the better of these defenders. She shoots, and Zulaika saves. It was a power shot, and Zulaika has felt the energy on that. Zulaika today, she's on. Uh, she has picked an injury, and okay, I think she's okay. But today she's on point. She's doing well, actually. She's reading the the game well. She's she connects with her teammates. She's involved in all the tactics and the technique of the game. She's doing well, and I see her also communicating, talking. It's very crucial for goalkeepers. Millicent again prepares herself between the two defenders in Farid and Namiruman Jalida Nagawa. She's just giving them a hard time as they have a free kick halfway the pitch. They are going to take it. That is what they have done. Goes in between, cleared away by Namirimu, brought into the midfield. Ball stolen by Lydia, given to Anita, who Namirimu has it. Millicent drifting to the right. Great passes amongst these players, and it is played outside the poles. I think Millicent should concentrate now, shouldn't panic. She still has some time. She can surprise Wakiso if she concentrates. She has to be free from pressure. She's putting pressure on herself, saying that I have to score, but she needs to calm down. The skills of Millicent, again showing you that she tried from that angle. It was a powerful shot, but denied by Zulaika, who was particularly on point and had moved a few inches. That is uh, Veronica for you. It's stolen at the midfield level by Patricia Naiga. Again, ball. And Wakiso Hills will have the free kick. Wakiso Hills will have the free kick because apparently there is a player who has been brought down. I like it. In every team there is that player who keeps smartness. Wakiso Hills has a player like she's always tacking in. Very smart. Shouldn't opt for long ball. Just pass it to your teammate because uh, again long balls. Wasted. I think players should also have that game understanding that it's not always long high balls towards the opponent's half, but they can also start and play some short and long passes, build up from behind, build up from the midfield, and go forward. Wakiso Hills has an understanding with Kampala Queens. They have certain players that have managed to come in. Players like Jerida Nanyonjo, Jerida Nanyonjo and Nusula Nachin, who has not yet come on. And when we talk about Kampala Queens, we are talking about the hierarchy in Ugandan football. Because the FIFA president does not only have interests in the team, but he owns it. Unfortunately for them, they didn't make it out of the group stages. It was Kawempe, UCU. Did she corporates get out? And uh, the eventual winner in Lady Doves. It is a very big ball distribution gimmick coming in from Zulaika. And almost got the Shimaroons footballer injured. Yes, it's like uh, uh, the defender for the captain of Wakiso Hill. She's one of the gifted players, if you can see. She's a defender with good physique. But also having that natural left, it's barely seen. It's hard to find a player with a natural left. Able to kick balls as far as she can. Akuto Esther doesn't want to, room, to leave room for error. That is why she has a serious first own, wondering why her teammates allowing the opponents penetrate through to her they are exposing her a little too much and she has very good get, uh, ball distribution now that is called stepping into someone's leg it's a little painful and awful so wakiso hills will have this free kick as we have the emanero hair style look alike in najuka just walking away as she's the culprit for that incident Wakiso need to go long from the midfield. Wakiso making it long to the goalkeeper. Oh my she God. punches it away. Very 
good. Well Esther done. punches it away. Just like a goalkeeper should be. And Farida Nanyonjo is laughing because she knew she had got the right direction, the power and energy. She was on target. To try beat the goalkeeper. Hard luck for Nanyonjo. On she any was on other target. day, that could have been a goal. Definitely. That definitely. could have been I mean, a goal. But then great goalkeeping in coming in from the goalkeeper. Wonderful save. Like we said, Wakiso can suppress Shimaroons. Anything can happen in the game. It's not done until it's over. But what a very good display by Wakiso Hill. The underdogs for this. But trying to show and prove that they're also there to play and they can qualify and be in the Super League next season. Yeah. Throw in into the box. Oh, look at Wakiso the Hill have a chance to strike. <laughs> there is no one for that. She's going to shoot and it goes wide. And like off target. They have tried to probe. They have puffed. They have consistently gone up front, but are not yet lucky. And now, the goalkeeper, who is a hero, after serving, that was the blockbuster coming in from Nanyonjo. A very good technique for high level. Wow, wow, wow. Just look at her. Oh Lifting it up oh. and then very good technique coming in from the goalkeeper. She knew she couldn't reach it, so she played it off. Oh. That was wonderful for the goalkeeper. She didn't do anything. She knew she could not handle the ball, but just punch it away as any goalkeeper, as any top goalkeeper would do. But it was a very good, long, high ball chipped in by Nanyonjo with a very good technique. Shimaruns extinguished the likes of Lango FC, who are in the same group. That is how they managed to get here. They have scored very many goals to this point. Apparently, without Amuria Hill High School, we are the top scorers. Still, we got Group D, where Wakis, where Shima Runes, through Millicent, became destroyers and left their opponents for dead. But it is reality sinking in. At a semi-final, the goals cannot come in like water. But now we have Najuka trying to intercept this. The ball is still on, according to the referee. And now they can finally call for a throw in at the front field this is for shima Rules football club and when you see how Najuka's hair is like you're saying it's like for Kui, just demonstrates that how players motivate are uh, intrinsically motivate other players to play whether he's a man or woman so Kui should know that she, she's Najuka is being intrinsically motivated by what Kui does and that's why he has the air and that's the how even footballers being men or women can also learn to play. Dropping back a bit is Veronica. Ball given away to the opponents. She tries to play to no man's land and the goalkeeper will come and get this. The coach is not happy. Coach Alex is not happy. I like the seriousness of the yeah. goalkeeper of Shima Runes. Just like a goalkeeper, her command, she tells them when in charge. She doesn't need any nonsense within her half, which is better and okay. Goal for Shima Runes. Seventeen to go. Actually sixteen to be exact. Those are the minutes Shimaruns have to go to the finals. But Wakiso know it that they need to score a goal amicably to try get themselves back in the tie. That is Najuka for you. Operating so well at left back. They will need her to go a little long and distribute well for the visiting team according to the fixture, though they are all camped at Injeru, Veronica, Adong. These two hair mates, hairstyle mates, love to play for one another. She keeps chasing. That is the captain for you. With a good turn, of course. Farida, trying to get Stella Kawala in the midfield, but goal scorer Namirim Naluyima is mustered away from the ball. And the referee gives Shimaruns the advantage. It will be a throw in, and Lydia will be the one to bring that. Yeah, 
Oh, so what's a break? And this is the time where coaches need to talk to these players, but they shouldn't overdo it because they're already tired, they're exhausted. Just give them three or two instructions because also they all have to process and know what they, they have to do. All players are aware that we need to win, but you don't even have to put them pressure on them. So far, Wakiso is doing better, like as a goalkeeper, she's communicating, she's reading the game well. If they change their mindset from defensive to also attacking kind of football, Wakiso can score and you never know what can happen. But so far, she Maroons have an upper hand because of Well, we have a few to end of uh, second half. This may seem the end of the journey for Wakiso Hills, but a credit to Mr. Will Bashaka, also instrumental for the existence of Wakiso Hills. Despite the team being relegated to regional league in 2018, he maintained it and maintained the squad and managed to get back to the elite league. And now they are seeking a slot in the top flight football. We all know football is expensive. Mr. Will Bashaka, May God reward you with all your worldly desires as we look at your team trying to look for that badly needed goal. But apparently Shima Runes is making a simple weight out of you and may try to have an upper hand because they have already scored through Narima in the first half. And actually Mr. Shaq is one of the, uh, the stakeholders, the good stakeholders who have never quit who have never decided to leave women football has always been there with his school and he has a young team if nurtured they can be developed into good players as most of the girls are young but again they have played and demonstrated a very good kind of play today as they have managed to contain the uncontrollable shimmer runs offside Looks like someone is injured, Hope and that is the captain Farida. They need her in those minutes. She's been a tremendous figure in trying to stop Millicent. So between her and her counterpart, in defense, they need to be very alert and use that to get some moment, get up front and look for the equalizer so that they can take us to penalties. But as it looks, Shimaroons want to finish this off, not in penalties. Yes, Wakiso needs Farida, shouldn't pick up a serious injury now. She has been a force among us, Wakiso Hills force, mostly in the defense. She has done her part and actually she should be rewarded by her teammates if at all they can score that only one goal needed within just 11 minutes left to the end of this play. Substitute. Yeah, there is substitution going on for Wakiso Hills. But apparently, they didn't give some of the names on the team sheet. So it will be very hard sometimes to make a quick work out of that. We have the Shimaroon's goalkeeper receiving treatment. Actually, not a goalkeeper, defender. it is one of their defenders. And I think for them it is okay because it helps them get better composure and approach the game better within the next 10 minutes as it's a setback temporarily for Wakiso who know that any minute wasted then there is nothing. This one is called Masinde. She and Veronica. has very good height, very good physique. Maybe she'll try to emulate Masindo Nyango, the goalkeeper. She's not a goalkeeper, but in her number, she, has, she can also try to be lively and 
never and make Ugandans never forget about her. It's a long kick. She maroons don't want the ball near their territory because they know what will happen. She's a well built up defender. Defend everyone would wish to. That is Veronica her. for you. Veronica Masinde. She has given the ball to Naluima. Adong joins that. Naluima just running through the midfield, not being allowed because Stella Kawala has tried to come in a little long. Shima Runes are trying to consolidate their win. And how Farida makes the ball, the game look simple, playing football simple. The way she intercepted that ball away from the opponent towards her. Patricia Naiga trying to set up Nusula Nakin, who just came on. Nusula, Nusula muscled off the ball. And I think they'll have a corner. And should have been a foul. Yeah, I don't know the referee. Maybe she stood and saw that Lydia did not cause a lot of damage. But apparently, that slicing of an opponent meant that a yellow card could have been given. Just look at the miscuing. She, uh, Wakiso, he, she has a chance to shoot and it's oh out. <laughs> Where does she shoot? You don't miss from such a range when your team needs an equalizer. No, 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 That's no. That's why we say concentration. Patricia Naiga has just buried her team. She had all the chances and the Shimaroon's defenders had miscued. And all the time to do what she wanted oh, to oh do. Oh my God, disappointing from her. I know the coach will talk to her about that. Anyway, they are still young. You know, when you're young, then you don't play football at that level. When you play football at that level, you, you need to be a little bit mature. The and you need to read the game well. The team depended on her for that. And that's why they need the coach's advice always telling her, when you're in the 18 yard box, take your time as a striker, concentrate, and just see that ball back. Oh, they missed such really? a chance. In the 82nd minute. Really? It would have been now a 1 1. Draw game and then we'll enjoy another eight minutes of this game. Unfortunately, Waxo just wasted that chance. Laika again fails to handle the ball firmly. Credit should be given to the shooter. Yeah. And now Shimaroons, on top of already having a goal and enjoying possession, they have a, a corner to their name. So looks like Wakiso, time is not on their side. We have Najuka bringing this in. They rise up. There is a lot of disorganization. The backside is about to say. And that which is bad, like for defenders to just stand nowhere instead of marking opponents, sometimes not good for the team. Millicent has been kept at bay, but Naluima wasn't. And that means that Shima Runes will have a lot of players to rely on. Cleared again. Safety, safety. Jalida Nagawa. Marking Millicent. And doing well. Marking Millicent. She has not given her she has not given her breathing space. Or else things would be different. If she has not marked her way. Millicent had a very good corner kick. But there were many there were many defenders for what so That was a very good high long ball. I like uh, technique of kicking high long balls. Well, we all know that Wakiso Hill suffered a big accident some time back as we were traveling to Soroti to play Olida. And if you remember, they were given time to reshape something that would have worked as a relegation for them. And that's how they managed to come back. So, Mr. Will Bashaka, again, I would love to thank you as a person. And I believe the nation will thank you fully. Because whatever you're doing is putting a very big stone on the development of women football. 
which we amicably need at the moment. Five minutes to go. Wakiso Hill looking for that equalizer. Wakiso at the midfield level. Stella Kawala ballooning the ball up. Controlled so well by Najuka. And Natong also is there for Shima Runes. Shima Runes at the backside. That will be the young Emmanuel Okui hairstyle like. In Najuka, Justin Kiza drifting the ball up. She was looking for a dong. Yeah, Najuka with her kiss haircut. Actually, doing. A, she's playing very good high long balls. Veronica. She, Veronica muscling it out. The opponent, she regains possession of the ball. Looks kind of dangerous for Wakiso Hills. Keeper is down. Zulaika is down. Whatever happened to her, and she's in pain. You can see she's in pain. And considering the way the teammates are just standing there, they are contemplating between having the keeper get medication and waste time or get the ball and continue looking for that equalizer. It is a knock on the head, should have been an aerial balto. And we can see there is a Shimaruns footballer also down. Oh, Hope it's not their captain, Millicent. Hopefully, they, yeah, it was a knock, they collided. But this is not the right time for Zulaika to have, pick up an injury for Wakiso because they really need her. Well, that is Najuka. Actually, it's Millicent, shot nine. Millicent, it all started when Veronica brought in this. Millicent got one pass to herself, got it, and then. Oh. Is that a penalty? Is that a penalty? It would have been, but... What happens? Because, just look at that. Millicent is one super striker. She plays the ball in, the ball goes off, and keeper runs into her. Actually, keeper, her intention was not Well, if it's not a penalty, then she might need to have a corner to their name because the ball is already played when the incident happens. And I think Wakiso will be happy to walk away with the corner other than being punished by a late challenge after the ball had gone. But it is a bad knock for the goalkeeper the way it was. She, she just came in and knocked herself on the knee for Millicent. And concussion are one of the years for women in this game. Hopefully she doesn't pick or no, shouldn't be that serious. A knock on the head is not good for women. It's one of the injuries that affect them. Knee and concussion worldwide. It is about a minute left to be played for the Shimaruns coach talking to Anita, who has been instrumental on the right for the Shimaruns. And apparently, they have another keeper warming up. Wakiso Hill. They have another keeper warming up. Hopefully, she can come in to save the day. Kellen Yorinya. Kellen Yorinya. Warming up to come in and utilize this. It should be a minute, and then those that the referee will add may matter a lot. Has you realized? Oh, serious. Zulaika Ikoru so sorry, yeah, Zulaika. may have had the last part in the game, but she's being walked off the Ugandan stretcher. Allow me to call it like that. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'll have to call it. As the medical team hurries to have a look at her but it seems she's gotten a concussion yeah, which is not good for her considering so the distance she's not coming back exactly so otherwise so sorry for her but she has done a very good job so to see that it's only one zero for shima runes so like has been one of the players that have played well today for wakiso so sorry for that So the substitute in Kelly Orinia will be coming on for Wakiso Hill. Oh, so sorry for Zraika, but she has done her job. She oh, had just passes there. They still have a chance to get this done. But apparently, Millicent also who had gone off will be coming on. Najuka there. 
with the mohawk. Just look at where she makes her runs. Yes. I think she's inspired by Emmanuel Okui. Exactly, which is very Emmanuel good. Emmanuel Okui and brother Francis Olaki have the same shape, run the same way. And that is how Najuka is also running on the pitch. And that's how players motivate other players. So Najuka's target, you can see where she's going. Okui being her role model, she will always try to do what Okui does, which is good. She can be a woman, she can be a man in the game, but it's good to always be intrinsically motivated by someone who is in the game. Shima runs at the front field. That is Naluima goal scorer giving it to Babirie. Millicent shooting. And Farida blocking that. Farida is always there. Very good game reading for a defender like her. Again, Shima runs still the ball. That is Najuka. Babide was the recipient, but finally Millicent got her legs on this one, giving it to Anita. And now you have a Veronica. That's Adong, sorry, sending it a little backwards. Adong, Jazzy too. We're already in the 90th minute of play. Veronica nicking that in for Anita, who is uh, roving from the right. He had oh, poor clearance. Adong would like to shoot, shoots, but it goes wide. We have the last substitution of the game coming in from Shima Runes. I believe it's to waste time, which is also a gimmick and a great tactic for a team if they are winning. You have Anita walking off. Anita Babidi walking off. And then Akulu Zamzam is the player that came on for Shima Runes Football Club. She will have about a minute to utilize while on the pitch. Long throw in onto the pitch. Shima Runes trying to go long, managing the game now a little better. Shima Runes, oh, that is a yellow card. Definitely should be a yellow card. Denying a, a forward opportunity to score. Or else, actually she did well otherwise, it would have been a goal. It was a very good move for... Stella Kawala <laughs> entering into the referee's book. At and now... There is a free kick. Yes, coach. Yeah, she did what she was supposed to do. Without following her, it would have, it would have been a goal because it was the only pa player to be beaten and then the next was facing Kisha the Winnie going for this one. She's a new entrant. Just plays it a little wide. And Maroons looking like they are walking to the finals. Wakiso trembling and may have the last move. Ninety minutes of football. Wakiso Hills will have to go back home. Shimaroons have gone to the finals. They will be playing Rines come Thursday. And the coach cannot hide his smile as he hugs his counterpart or opponent. Wakiso probed and tried, but they failed to score. Maroons got the chance to run Naluima. They scored and everything is good as you can see it. It is 90 minutes of football and that's how it has panned out. It is Wakiso Hill going home and congratulations Shema Runes for walking onto the finals. And Wakiso should be proud of what they have done today, though they are out of the tournament. Okay. As you look at it, it's the end of 90 minutes. We shall take a short break, then we shall go for analysis to look through the 90 minutes as Shema Runes have begun the celebrations. For Akiso, it is frustrations.
We've cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rates. You also get MTN Central Points when you deposit, send, and withdraw MTN Mobile money. Visit our Momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st May 2021. Everywhere you go, MTN. What does it mean to be closer together? It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. Closer together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's the warmth of home or the beginning of something new. There's magic in sharing the things that we love because it's those things that bring us close together. The Teacher Management Information System, TMIS, is one of the innovations the Ministry of Education and Sports has rolled out to have all teachers register online. This is in line with the spirit of the National Teacher Policy to professionalize the teaching profession and the Ministry's effort to collate teacher data in a single database for better teacher management. Join us as we host officials of the Ministry of Education and Sports to discuss the teacher management information system. The show is sponsored by the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, under the Norwegian Teacher Initiative in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Sports. ourselves our other finalist and that is Shimaruns. They have not lost form since from day one and since group stages. Millicent not scoring today but making sure the team matches on to the finals. For Wakiso Hills displayed very good football, fantastic, but that couldn't get them through because we all know it is the goals that get us to the finals and not the good play. That is what happened. Fifi Fiona pick once again are checking on you and hoping you're having a fair afternoon. Uh, with me in studio again is uh, Juliet Nalukenge. That is a super player, former MVP, and she enjoys riding in that car. She knows she did it. Sometimes when you do something good and you know you're appreciated, there is nothing wrong with bragging about it. So I think that's a Juliet. Uh, that's the mode Juliet carries around uh, with her. And then the coach, who has been also doing commentary uh, with me for the 90 minutes. Juliet, uh, starting with you. You talked about Shimaruns marching to the finals because of their good play, their good uh, containment, and their good composition. I know you're really happy about your prediction, but again, I want to know, what do you think made them do better in the second half, not to concede against Wakiso Hills? Uh, what made Shimaruns to, to win Wakiso Hills? Yeah. Shimaruns, they were containing the ball, they were passing the ball. They were not on pressure. Even scoring their goal in the first first half, they made them win. It was a good thing. You loved the way the goal was scored. Yeah. That is Narima's blockbuster making a difference in today's game. Coach, yes. you're the tactician. Mm -hmm. You've been talking about players being told not to lose concentration. Exactly. You've talked about players being told that the prize is at the finals. Wakiso Hill have fallen short of that, mm. but Shimaruns have not disappointed. The one force, like they love to call themselves, have marched onto the final, and it is them against Rines. Exactly. Did you see that final as the group started? Definitely, when we are starting, I say because uh, when look at Shimaruns, I expected them to reach the finals. They were kind of the game they are playing, and I only said that if they can maintain their style of play, and they did it. However, they have struggled a little bit today because Wakiso also had their homework. Actually, Wakiso should be proud of themselves being young, whatever they have done. I saw this, that Shimaruns will reach the finals, depending on how they'll be playing for since the, this league started. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Juliet, uh, your last question. Uh, your, uh, this time around, your team they also didn't make it a little far, uh, because by far, I mean, Kawempe normally wants to win. When they don't win, 
it's registered as a loss uh, to your team. Uh, you're just like those of Wakiso here right now. How does it feel parking and going home uh, after being ejected from the tournament? Uh, you know football is like, maybe it wasn't our, our side, so that's football. You go and plan for the better or you go and cry. Ooh, we've lost and nothing much coming. No, we plan for the next season. Okay. Uh, Coach Maji Dandantan, yes. will Rinez and uh, Shimaruns be a very good game to make a final? Definitely. Because with Rinez, one person we are going to look at, the one who is a target for the team, is the goalkeeper. Elsie, she has been doing a commander very good from the start. And until making them to go through the penalties, that means they have a goalkeeper. And also they have some players like Narule, and then Shimarun still. So now, for instance, if they try to play more attacking football, uh, again, with defensive kind of play, we are going to have a very good final, and we are going to enjoy the final. Because Rennes and Shimaruns, they, have a, they don't have that big difference, but the kind of the style of play they're playing. But now it's a homework for all teams to see that one wins. But we, now we cannot predict. Rennes can win these finals. Even Shimaruns can win. If all players are fit mentally psychologically is one thing these players have to be with beside anything else but their mental fitness will determine who wins this tournament. and finally the last one for Juliet Juliet your national TV uh, you have played at the biggest stages what do you have to tell those fans they are watching you uh, because it is not so many times that you come visit us in our studios what do you have to tell those watching you as Juliet Nalukenge former MVP first of all I want to send greetings to my mom and dad, even my coaches. I love them so much, especially my mom. I love her so much. To all my fans in Uganda, and even those who are abroad, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for loving me. I will always work hard not to disappoint you. I always work for Uganda to make Uganda at a high level. Thank you. That is Juliet. For you, coach, yes. in 40 seconds, your last remarks today as we head into the finals on Thursday. Uh, my, f uh, my remarks, actually, I would like to thank everyone, UBC, very much for televising this game so that the country, the world, can see that women football exists in Uganda. And for all the stockholders in women football, you are doing a very good job to invest and help these girls to play football. Okay, that is Coach Majida for you. For all of us, we hope to are giving you a great final. Remember, we have uh, the budget of the country coming. We have the state of the nation also coming. So we'll juggle and give you everything uh, like it is needed. Uh, thank you, my dear camera person, Mr. Ratoro, my brother. Brother Nasa, I'll always, always be indebted for what you do. John Burns and the team. Eddie Mues, uh, Burns says you're immaculate. But for me, I say... You're the agon, you're the ecstasy, and you're everything we look for in a producer. Uh, for all of you out there, thank you for keeping it UBC. More programs coming, and definitely, I uh, will tell you, those with problems, I uh, just pray to God, uh, because he knows why he created all of us. From me, Fifi Pink, bye-bye. Jagles Kadigi, this is Imoron. We've cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rate. You also get MTN Central Points when you deposit, send, and withdraw MTN.